Uh, we're thinking today about making our life a prayer to God. And the Psalms are a lovely way into this. Uh, let me uh, read Psalm 23 to us now. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I'm not afraid. When you walk at my side, your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessing. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. Now that psalm was penned almost certainly by King David and he was having a conversation with God. Um, that's prayer. And it's a very natural conversation and covers uh, much of life, like many of the Psalms do, which are, you can really see them as a, a sort of the prayer book in the Bible, though there are many other prayers. And of course, Jesus is described as our good shepherd, and he shows us very much how to live our lives as a prayer to God, who is his Father life, a life knitted together by prayer, by prayerfulness, by an attitude of prayer in all that we do. And Jesus showed us that even when times were tough, in fact, especially when times were tough for him, he made time to be alone with his father and pray deeply commune deeply and converse deeply with him and many other people have uh, through uh, the years tried to model this deep communion deep prayerfulness in their lives and one such person was St Francis of Assisi and uh, he was an amazing guy in fact he's the patron saint of ecology and given our interest in green things and uh, make ourselves more sustainable as a community that's uh, that's good to know but he he left us a a legacy of of many things um one of the things he left was a, a prayer that we've turned into songs and it's very well known and it encapsulates his the way he tried to live his life um patterned on uh, on Jesus' example. Let's uh, read that together now. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. So what might this all mean for you and me, um, particularly as we try to put into practice the vision uh, that we have here at uh, West Wickham and Shirley, and that is to build a better community around us. And also, as we try to put into practice, both in our own lives and, and in, 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 in our lives as a community, this idea of radical hospitality, taking the plunge into uh, areas and, and uh, that we may not have experienced before. 
Well, maybe we can start by asking God to show us what that might mean for us in the coming days, months and years of our lives as we continue our exploration of what it means to be a Christian. And uh, maybe we can do that together as we listen uh, to this Teze chant, O oh Lord, hear my prayer. Well, I hope you have a lovely day and that you find uh, blessing as you think about these things listening to this lovely chant. Oh,